<laughs> we are doing this. <laughs> so got it. Bye. Okay. Welcome to the Virgin Authors Program. We are three friends bonded by our love of writing, struggling to navigate the publishing world. You can find us on our website, our social media platforms, and here a few times a month live as we chat about the craft of writing, conferences, queries, publishing, and book promotions. Really, we just love to talk about all of it. My name is Lisa. I go by Mandy McGuire when I write, and I am a virgin author. <laughs> hey, Mandy. Hi, guys. I'm Jan Vandalar, and I'm a virgin author as well. Hi, I'm Lisa Reese, and we are so excited to chat with our guest tonight. It's December, and we are into the holiday season, so who better to chat with than Nancy Nagel, a master of the work-life balance. Nancy is a USA Today bestselling author who whips up small town love stories with a dash of suspense and a whole lot of heart. She began her contemporary romance series, Adam's Grove, while juggling a successful career as a senior vice president for Bank of America and life on a 76 acre goat farm. <laughs> Nancy's 2021 release of The Shell Collector has been optioned in a book to movie deal with Fox Nation. That's so amazing. Yes. Nancy's book has been it's insane. actually made now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yay. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Several other of Nancy's books have inspired made-for-television movies. You can watch Christmas Joy, Sand Dollar Cove, and The Secret Ingredient um, on Hallmark. Nancy also wrote the novelization for Hallmark's three original movies in the Christmas and Evergreen series. So she's done it both ways, books to movies and movies to books. Wow. She now enjoys an early retirement from the financial industry and devotes her time to writing, antiquing, and the occasional spa day with friends. She's a native of Virginia uh, Beach and now calls the Blue Ridge Mountains home. Welcome, Nancy. Thanks so much thank for being with us. Thank y'all. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> so excited to have you. Super happy to have you. Thank you, Nancy. So we're going to talk all things Christmas and Hallmark and writing and work-life balance with you tonight because you just seem to have it all. So tell us how in the world you manage so many projects. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I really use all those same techniques that I used to use in the banking industry in my writing life. <laughs> so none of it went to waste. <laughs> it does help to have that like structure and that intelligent job. I'm like, okay, that kind of makes Yeah, I mean, everything from creating a mission statement to having goals to managing each of my bodies of work like its own little project. I mean, it's really the only way I can stay on track. And, and I try to have released two to three books every year um, because I want to make a living doing what I love and um, that means a lot of work so I've got to keep a lot of balls in the air you know right now um, the wedding ranch came out on the 6th of December yay and it's so pretty <laughs> but it's also not Christmas <laughs> no but that's I'm making the bow for you for that I, I'm not that in my so office so I have my book too because I'm not in my office I forgot it but, yeah congrats it's amazing when it's out now right Nancy or is it, it, is. Yeah. it came out on the 6th and um, it's a women's fiction it's the first women's fiction book that I've written for St. Martin's Press they've published almost all my previous Christmas books and um, I was really excited to do a work of women's fiction for them so that is out and because I knew I wasn't going to have a Christmas story I did release just a novella called Mission Merry Christmas it came out <laughs> September 6th and uh, it's just a short nugget of a read and I don't even have one. I've sold all of them that I have, but it's got that turquoisey cover on it with a big snowflake and it's Aww. set in the Caribbean. So oh. they, uh, it's a sports therapist who's there to work with a bah humbug and baseball athlete who's tweaked his knee and she's trying to get him ready. And he <laughs> is feeling all bad because he has had to cancel the ski trip with his nephew and sister. And mm -hmm. he's, uh, he and the sports therapist end up creating this pseudo white Christmas for his nephew together in the islands. It was a oh, lot of fun. Right? It's Christmas. super cool. You can read it in an evening. <laughs> fun. Oh my God. How fun is that? that that's a movie. I can see that. I, I know. I'm working on that screenplay. Yeah. Are you I think seriously? It's 
me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, you're, so you're like, okay, I don't know if you guys got that when Liz was reading all the stuff about this amazing human being, but so, so her books, what three you said are screenplays now official? So, um, so I have written four books that have become movies and those are Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas, Sand Dollar Cove and The Secret Ingredient. They're all airing on the Hallmark Network. Uh, the only one on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries is Hope at Christmas and that starred the handsome Ryan Pavey from General Hospital. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yes. we love that one. <laughs> That's so cool. So she does the screenwriting as well. So you're my hero because you're not just sticking and you're doing women's fiction, you're doing romance. I mean, you're like all over there. And that's kind of my goal, really. I mean, all there's all of us that have all these different things, but you know, you always say, you know, you should stick with one specific thing. And, you know, so you've been all over. Yeah. And I think sticking with one specific thing is good advice to an extent. Mm -hmm. right. Just like just like in your financial portfolio, you want to diversify and have you know, some space there because you never know what's going to happen. And people are very quick to say, well, this isn't hot or that's not hot. And, but you also want to make your readers happy. So genre hopping can be difficult on your career. It can end up costing you an extra pen name. And I can't remember my own name to begin with. So right, it would be a little bit of a problem for me. Um, <laughs> but even though I've written, uh, I wrote a cozy mystery series. I co-authored that with Kelsey Browning oh, and um, it was, uh, we, said it was kind of like the golden school uh, the golden girls meet dirty harry and they were all 50, <laughs> over 50 female and from the south and they're uh you know solving these little soft crimes it's super mm -hmm. fun um but you know i wrote those i've written women's fiction i've written romantic mysteries and small town and but here's the thing all of those things there's a thread that is small town and love stories and community yeah, so exactly. the readers can kind of vacillate through all that stuff right and still get the same thing same thing with the movies for example sand dollar cove that movie is nothing like the book like absolutely nothing the only thing they kept was the name oh, of the book and the name of the characters the characters wow. jobs flipped the whole the whole story is different but it's heartwarming in small town <laughs> so I'm like you know what as long as it's heartwarming in small town I'm okay with it the fans yell at you about that if they change you know because like you know I'm like wait a minute this is I, like this you know? the, the fans get more upset about it than I do I'm fine with it as long as it's heartwarming and I appreciate that the fans get upset about it but I'll be honest I mean once you kind of educate the readers that you know a screenplay is 20,000 words 20,000 words that's not very many words mm -hmm. there's not room for secondary characters and extra um you know little plot threads that are going through the stories there's just mm -hmm. not a lot of room in that and mm -hmm. so when you're taking a word a, you know a book that's 88,000 words something's got to go and also in the screenplay process, it's not usually one screenwriter making hmm. that screenplay out of that book. Either, I one screenwriter know. might write the first one and then okay. it's going to go through iterations. And then while they're filming, it's probably going to change again. Huh. So the people that are reading or writing the screenplay or making those tweaks on the last rounds have never seen the book. Oh. And sometimes it shows there's some funny things that have happened along the way, you know, things that have gotten dropped or changed that I'm like, oh, I don't think you meant to do that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, <laughs> it works now, I, I knew that about different people working on it, but it never occurred to me that some of those people would never have read the book. Oh I mean, yeah. And then since you are a successful screenwriter, have you ever adapted your own books? Well, I've got the three screenplays written. I haven't had any of my screenplays filmed. So I've written three, but I haven't had any of those filmed. The, okay. the films that are done on my books, somebody else has written those screenplays. Um, and so there are five altogether. Um, so yeah, I hope someday that that'll happen. But so far, you know, I've just been working on it on the side and trying to get my contracted books in. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, she's got contracted books, virgins out there. <laughs> did you take classes for the screen? And how did you get all of your training? So Mandy knows everything. Mandy's like, no, I know exactly. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've, I've taken a few classes online, you know, listening into, you know, people's advice and things like that. But for me, I got so lucky, you know, to go through the process of, you know, Christmas and Joy and Open Christmas 
um, I had written the books, I knew the stories, and then they gave me copies of their screenplays, and then I saw the movie. So I could see all the the changes mm -hmm. and, yeah. the, the and how it formula. fit together like a puzzle. Yeah. And yeah. then when I thought, I kind of felt like I had a really good idea about it, and I started writing my first screenplay. Well, then I got that deal to do the novelizations for the Christmas and Evergreen movies. Well, that's where the real education came in, because then I was taking the screenplays and trying to turn them into a novel. And mm -hmm. I mean, I have told people this story a hundred times. I thought it was going to be such a piece of cake because they were like, oh, we're going to send you the movie. We're going to send you the screenplay. All you have to do is turn it into a book. I'm like, ah, OK. And so it was a really tight window. I wasn't even worried. And then I got it and I realized that screenplay was 20,000 words. <laughs> and I had to turn it into a a whole story with yeah. thoughts and backstory and okay. I remember it was about a week before the due date and my editor called me and she goes oh my gosh I think I forgot to tell you something Nancy we yeah. also had an epilogue and I was like hallelujah because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know how I was going to twinkle lights another 5,000 words <laughs> But I will say this, it, it was really, um, it was a lot of pressure and I hadn't, it was pressure that I hadn't considered. And that was, you know, I love my towns, love, love, love my small towns. They are another character in my story. You know, they're pivotal. Right. And, they are um, life. right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so when I saw the movie, I had no idea when I signed the contracts, what the movies were going to be about, where they were being set and nothing. And so when I saw the movie and it was beautiful, Christmas and Evergreen, everybody knows and loves that little red truck that's so temperamental and the cute town of Evergreen is so, so real you know and beautiful and so when I had to sit realized everybody had already seen it everybody already had their opinion and then <laughs> after the fact I'm writing about it and no, I've got to meet those a... expectations it was it was big deal you know yeah. because I didn't want to let anybody down yeah and usually uh, I have added, added pressure I would ugh. yeah because you know when we write it we write it full enough that they can feel it and see it but we have enough room that they can bring their memories in with them right right yeah and you you can't do that when they've already seen it yeah so, wow. yeah so it was it was different even, you're, it was, you're like it, so far ahead of me I can't even yeah. end how you did that that's amazing twice right yeah yeah three three, three of those three that I did yeah so it, in the process of doing those forwards and backwards, you know, I really got a good sense of it. The other thing was when I went on set for Hope at Christmas, the director was amazing and he really helped me you know he would spend time with me and say oh well let me explain to you how I set up this shot and what I did and he showed oh, me a few notes. and yeah, yeah and so it really gave me an insider perspective to what was going on and um yeah I mean I couldn't appreciate him more the whole team more uh for mm -hmm. the things they were willing to share with me and um and we've talked about this you know the writing community is so great oh, you know yeah. the folks that are that are really sincere uh, and just, you know, we all are ready to help each other, you know, make the next leap, turn the next page, be strong enough to trust ourselves to do it. Right. Because right. we all, we all get to the point, you know, I do every time I go through developmental edits, I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I've torn this thing up so far. It will never become another story. Pretty <laughs> time. I mean, I, without fail, 40 books, I still worry about it. I still see it. So yeah, we all need to lift each other up and, and get through those little stories. Oh well, and speaking that. of that, I, I, I'd I love Mandy to share the story of how she met you because yeah. it's so sweet and you're so generous. Oh, that's very nice. Um, yeah, I'll just share with our listeners. You know, we have a lot of friends that um, watch our show that are kind of in the same stage as us. They're waiting and seeking that agent or um, a publishing contract or, a, you know, they're working to get their screenplays out there. And, you know, we're trying to build community. That's what we're doing here is building community. And I met Nancy at a writer's conference, my very first one um, in 2015. I had not finished my first novel and which is still on my computer and not sold. <laughs> so um, it was just at a conference and she had a table where they were selling books um, with proceeds going to charity and I recognized her name so I thought I must have read her before and I just 
she had books up, which her covers just always just enticed me. They're just like, I just love them. And, and I walked right up and she was the most kind and very generous with her time and her um, kind of her comments about um, the conference. And I told her that I was new and I didn't know what I was doing. And she was just so lovely and kind. And she's been willing to stay in touch. And I've been able to email her and ask a couple questions. And she's responded. And there's so many times authors don't do that. So I'm so thankful for you, Nancy. Well, thank and you. Now here you are on our show as we try yeah, to help. I know. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nancy, you've said to me before, I think it might have been an email, that yeah. you enjoy kind of uh, celebrating the firsts in your career, like if you have something new and that was a first and, and you celebrate those and that that they're so exciting. So can you tell us a little more about that or some like um, some examples of how other authors could do that for their for their steps along the way? Yeah, well, you know, there's so many firsts that people don't even realize are part of our journey, right? Yeah, that's why I mean, we're virgins. We and there's a that. lot of them are before we're ever even published, you know, it's like you know, Most. <laughs> meeting our favorite writers, you know, and feeling that inspiration, you know, oh, yeah, the, totally. the first story that you feel like actually hangs together, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. I mean, and we all have that first book that just sits under, will sit under the bed forever and it should, you know, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I do celebrate them all and, you know, and I do little things, you know, I treat myself to a new charm for every story. Oh, so I've amazing. got so many charm bracelet charms, you know, um, and most of them are Brighton. I love Brighton stuff. It's my thing. They aren't expensive. You know, you can get, yes, you can get yeah. a beautiful charm. And so it was so funny because, and this is one of the things that I tell people is you've just got to be authentic to who you are. You don't have to be on stage trying to sell yourself as an author just be who you are and yeah. so for example as I'm collecting these charms um the first books that I put out were the Adams Grove series they were romantic mysteries and um they had the cute names like sweet tea and secrets and wedding cake and big mistakes and all that kind of <laughs> stuff and yeah. so I had gotten some charms for those first books and it brightened charms of course and I had the the three-tier wedding cake for the wedding cake and big mistakes I had the camera yeah. the out of focus and the wow. little pecan pie for pecan pie and deadly lies and I had put them on on Twitter just to share with friends you know oh look I got these three new charms for my Adams Grove series blah 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 and I just shared it I wasn't trying to get anything I wasn't trying to connect with anybody I wasn't trying to show off I was just sharing how excited I was about those that first and lo and behold I get a tweet back from Brighton Living mm. And I ended up on the cover of their Mother's Day issue that year. Aww, I know. So they posted me on their Facebook page <laughs> and they gave away like a dozen of those little wedding cake charms when oh. Wedding Cake Big Mistakes came out. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't trying to do it. So you just never know, you know, who's going to resonate with you. And I think just, you know, writing what's authentic to you, telling the stories yeah. that are in your heart that are pushing to get out, even if they're not the popular thing, the right yeah. people are going to find those stories. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, writing The Shell Collector for me, I mean, that that has been the book of my heart. In the year I met you, Mandy, Lisa, um, <laughs> <laughs> in 2015, you know, was the year after I'd lost my husband. Oh, and uh, right. so I was, you know, still getting back on my feet. And I had, you know, when I lost him in 2014, it was to a very short battle with cancer. Yeah. It was less than three months and he was gone. Oh. And oh, so I decided within like 30 days after he died, you know, my best friend had come and she was staying with me. She stayed here for three months and it took me no time to decide that I was going to take an early retirement and I was going to move away. We lived on an 80 acre goat farm and, um, we had, we had taken that house down to the studs and built it back and every crooked window and bad, you know, seam in the sheetrock and <laughs> the light switch that didn't work quite right. And the window that you had to push really hard to get up. All of that stuff was just memories that were so wonderful, 
but just so painful to live with. And so, you know, I moved and, you know, I took the early retirement in June, moved to North Carolina, moved my mom in with me and decided that I was just going to write full time and concentrate on spreading joy. And I mean, not that I recommend like that crazy of a a journey because it's like doing everything you're not supposed to do as a, a, a widow. Um, but it, it is all work you know, yeah, and, no. um, and really I remember, you know, I, I lost Mike the end of January and, um, I had had a cousin who had fought cancer for years and mm-hmm. she had been doing really well and then it was not doing as well. And I kind of didn't even realize that she was doing so poorly mm-hmm. because I was, you know, taking care of Mike. And five weeks after Mike passed away, she passed away. And she had once shared this story with me about a friend of our family who used to walk the beach out near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on the Outer Banks. And um, she had been walking the beach with something heavy on her heart. And as she walked, she kicked up a shell. And when she bent down to pick it up, it had a scripture written in it. And it was just the message that she needed to read that day. And over the next six years, she found four shells, not all of them with scriptures, but all of them with something positive. And I think one of them may have just had a heart on it. My dog is kind of be in the picture here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's oh. a 80 pound perennial mastiff. He's a oh big Oh my God, how cute. Yeah. I have a go and a cheap dog. So I'm right. I have little ones here too. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Anyway, I remember when, when she passed away, I was still mm-hmm. so torn apart about losing Mike that I couldn't even make it to the funeral. But I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I could use a bucket of those shells right now. And that was the moment that the story of the shell collector began to resonate in my mind. You know, Mm -hmm. shells that were happening, you know, into the right people's hands at the right times in their lives. And um, a young widow trying to get back on her feet in a new place with an older widow who was kind of escorting her through that process. And of course, my my name was just a young girl my age, but um, yeah, it's it's a beautiful It is. It gives me the chills because just, I mean, that's what we're all trying to do as writers, as artists, is take these moments from our lives Mm -hmm. and turn them into something that can help someone else going through the same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it's, it's the most important book that I wrote. I, um, I had to change agents. I changed publishers really? uh, because I knew what I wanted for that book. And I, it was very important to me okay. and, you know, grief is hard, but we are mm-hmm. every single one of us is going to go through it. We can't escape it. Mm-hmm. And although everybody goes through it, nobody knows the answer to how to do it. It's going to be different for everyone. But mm-hmm. my hope was that in reading this beautiful story of friendship and unlikely um, new friendships that somebody going through that grief is going to remember that story and be able to Mm -hmm. take more graceful steps towards through that process, you know? So um, yeah, it, it has been amazing. And so when Fox uh, contacted me and said that they wanted to turn the shell collector into the first Fox original movie, I was over the moon. I was so excited and it was the perfect house to make that movie because you know there's a military angle um you know her husband was a marine and he doesn't come back from his tour and you know they started off with this beautiful scene you know when they're going off you know on the the tour and they and they bring it back and the the christianity and the prayer all that stuff was still in the movie um and i was so glad that those important pivotal moments didn't get dropped yeah. So well, we um, have um, Darla Pinker, Pinkerton. She, thank you guys for being on here. Christina, Angela, Angel, I'm sorry, Christina, Angel Boyd. Um, she said, this is so encouraging to hear a beautiful story, but Darla Pinkerton, sorry, I'm slaughtering. Um, she said she just watched the show collector yesterday and it was wonderful. So oh, I mean, oh, thank you. You know, how sweet is that? I mean, I really, I've got to tune in. We were looking for Christmas stuff and just different movies to watch and I'm definitely turning that. I haven't seen that one. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and it was funny. I got a note today. It hasn't aired in Canada yet. So any of our writer friends who are up in Canada, it is coming to y'all in January. <laughs> it's air, It starts airing in January 18th, I believe. It's on 11 times in January and February. And I think it's called the Home and Family Network. Mm-hmm. Um, 
up mm -hmm. in Canada. Uh, but you know, the guy who played Tug in the movie, who is he started out as this little secondary character. You know, he was the diner on the beach owner. And the more I wrote him, the more I fell in love with him. <laughs> and, um, he's just this old guy, you know, and he's got this parrot yeah. that he calls the wife, and everybody loves it. The parrot even made it into the movie. And the guy <laughs> who played Tug was amazing. Like he was the best actor. And it was funny because as much as I loved him writing him, once I saw him on the screen, like when I finished watching that movie, I'm like, I'm writing Tug's story. Tug oh. is going to be and so, and so we've been in contact and um, I'm, I'm hoping that that'll, that'll all work out and we'll see that guy in a, another movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're wrapping up and it's so hard to, because you're such an powerful person here, but it's so cool to hear, like we, we were talking to Joshua Moore in one of our conferences and it's like to have one story really always be in your heart that that was, that's like so powerful to hear and to hear the background on it. It's like such an important because you write so many beautiful things anyway. And then that one, it's like, it's just such a great story, the, the background. And I, and it was so good that you followed your instincts to switch if you have to, to get it done the way you wanted it done yeah. and to have yeah. the, the instincts and to follow those and to believe in yourself. Kudos. I mean, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, the other books I'd written hadn't been um, inspirational. Of course I have a Christian worldview and, you know, it just pops up and I write a lot of Christmas books for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I knew that that was a really strong point. But, you know, we didn't talk much about life balance, so we might have to come <laughs> back and do it. But I do want to say that there are times when I'm juggling all this stuff yeah. that I really feel like I can't get it done. And sometimes life balance means you know, shimmying things down into little buckets that you can handle. And so there are a lot of days where I only write for 20 minutes. And in 20 minutes, I know I can get 800 to 1000 words down. And they may not be great words, but they're words that I can then later fix. Right. Um, and that. Yeah. that you need to live life to have the stories to share. That's if you're right. always in there, work, 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 working, trying to hit those goals and not living life, you are never going to be able to tell an authentic story. So be mm -hmm. kind to yourself, live life, experience it, and you will get the time back. It will come back to you. That's absolutely that. wonderful. That's Thank like, you. I'm just like, I'm so glad we have this on tape kind of. So you guys, <laughs> everybody can rewatch this and we can um, replay it because it's beautiful words. And that's exactly what we need to hear because it's so, especially in the holidays, we're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do not have to make 45 kinds of cookies. You know what? <laughs> friends, Y'all each make two dozen of one kind, switch them out. It's yeah. one work, six ways, you're done. Cookie swap. Yeah, there's so many ways to just boil it down to the simple. Yeah. Okay, okay, Nancy, so we go. before you before you uh, take us out, I just also want to point out to all of the people who are ever watching our show, you know, Nancy, your comments about being authentic and writing your stories and living your life so you can, you know, tell these stories and help other people and share. It's so important for young authors like us who are really focused on words on the page, oh, you know, exactly. uh, querying the agents, going to the conferences. It, it feels like work, work, work. So we can make the connections to get the thing, but you have to enjoy the journey and you have to be authentic in your relationships and, and enjoy your day. So it, that's so such good for us to remember. So thank yeah. you. You're well welcome. said, Mandy. Okay. So two things I want to do real quick. Okay. So at some point, you're going to have to send us a picture or post it on Facebook of that bracelet with all the charms. Oh, on it. Yeah, sure. yes, I definitely will. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> I want to just I want to just share real quick um, how I celebrated one of my firsts. Mm -hmm. So um, Jana and I both recently won a contest and I got um I got a check for $150 and I cashed it and I was carrying it around in my wallet for like three months because I wanted it to be significant. So um, while I was in Santa Fe recently, I bought myself a little pair of adorable ankle boots and I have them still in the box and I wrap them up and I put them under my Christmas tree. To Lissa from Lissa for a story well written. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. You didn't get to talk. So it's awesome. Lisa. I'm so excited for you. And I, remind I, I me, Lissa, was that the first contest you entered also? No. 
Okay, it was just I the first one I won. I've entered okay. probably half a dozen. Okay. So yeah, you do need a reward. Just, like Josh Ramore, I don't mean to keep talking about him, but he's this powerful writer. And um, I'm saying his name right, right, guys? Josh Ramore. Yeah. He did a tattoo. I so I was waiting for you to say that, Nancy. I'm like, are you <laughs> tattoos too? He yeah. had <laughs> to his books. <laughs> 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 I get this. I appreciate you so much. And we're happy to help support the launch of your new book, The Wedding Ranch. And please tell our readers how they can find your books. Oh, I'm so easy to find. I'm at nancynagel.com and Nagel has that I in the middle, N-A-I-G-L-E. Um, but my books are everywhere. And The Wedding Ranch has even been showing up at Sam's Club for about $5 <laughs> cheaper than Amazon. So <laughs> If you got a Sam Club, you might want to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, um, oh, but it's yeah, worth it. Everywhere else on all your favorite e-tailers. <laughs> and it's in audio, really good audio. Oh, I like good audio. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's what, yeah. I think I might have downloaded an audio. So, okay, I'm excited because it's been when we knew we were having you. Okay, congratulations. Okay. And you can you find guys. the Virgin Authors here on Facebook Live on the third Thursday of every month and find more information on our website virginauthors.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. And for those of you watching this later, everybody have a great night. Yeah. And a merry happy yeah. holidays, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. You're so welcome. <laughs>